Hello everybody, uh, this is a video that will show you landing on Eve and Gilly. Um, this is the rocket that will take two probes that are currently attached together and will be that way for most of the journey uh, to Eve into orbit. Um, as you can see on the nav ball, I've actually pitched over immediately. I'm using uh, the near aerodynamic plugin which actually makes the aerodynamics somewhat realistic and uh, this rocket is doing gravity turn. You'll notice there's no SAS on and uh, I'm not actually uh, pitching or yawing at all. Um, but the rocket is continuing to tip over which is exactly what you want for a real gravity turn. Uh, which you can't do with stock aerodynamics unfortunately. However, there it is. Uh, it worked out pretty well. At some point um, during, I think, past 30,000, or 30, uh, yeah, 30,000 meters up, I actually tend to pitch over a little bit more, because that ended up working out better, but, yeah. So, um, uh, the other thing that's sort of interesting about um, the gravity turn, if you can do it well, if you can actually uh, do it correctly, it's possible to get into orbit after one pitch over maneuver, uh, in theory. I've never actually done it in practice, but in theory that's possible. So, it's still pitching over. I think I helped it a little bit there. Um, I'm also, if you're noticing, lowering the thrust, which is not 100% necessary, um, but it, it came down to I kept it around uh, two, the thr rate, the thrust to weight ratio around two. Um, it turned out to work out better, at least for this particular rocket, this particular payload. That actually is, I believe, a little less efficient than what is actually um, a perfect scenario would be, but it, uh, it helped me control exactly uh, how I was getting into orbit and when and, and all that kind of thing a little bit better than normal. Uh, so here, I couldn't actually pitch over without the engines on, without the engine gimbling very easily, so uh, I'm just using up the fuel in the first stage. And there we go, first stage separation. Uh, the second stage is actually using, so this is all using KW rocketry, um, the fairings as well as the engines and uh, most of the main fuel tanks are also all KW rocketry. It's a great mod. Um, this particular engine is now uses monopropellant, which I thought was interesting. It's a lower thrust, very high efficiency as far as a chemical rocket goes. It's a 410 seconds as far as specific impulse, which is pretty sweet. Um, and so even with this small you know, fuel tank in front of it, it's still, I think, at 1,200 meters per second delta V. So at this point, I'm just coasting up into space. Um, space in is obviously at 70 kilometers per second, or 70 kilometers up altitude, so there we just hit space. Now, one thing I should have done at this point, is now that we're in space, is I should have actually opened the fairings uh, in front to actually let them fall back to the planet, because right now if I did absolutely nothing, the craft would fall back to the planet. Um, we're going to do obviously do a burn to actually circularize the orbit, but what I should have done is open the fairing so that they fall and burn up in the atmosphere. Uh, I actually forgot, <laughs> so what will end up happening is I'll circularize my orbit, I'll get to orbit, and then, um, then I'll open the fairings, but the problem with that is the fairings will actually stay in orbit forever. Uh, adding to possible space junk, which is not a huge deal, but it's annoying. And in general, I like to be to keep that clean if possible. So here we go. Um, you can see the periapsis on the right, and the flight engineer going uh, up quickly, which is exactly what you want. Um, so even here, right where the periapsis is only four kilometers above the surface, I should have opened uh, the fairings at this point. That would have been perfect, but did not do that. And instead, 
right, now I'm in orbit, and instead I open them in a couple of seconds here. Now, um, one thing to note is that I, in order to, to keep the, the video kind of short, I actually cut out most of the actual transfer, interplanetary transfer burn to EVE. Um, and the reason is, is because, first of all, I made a whole bunch of mistakes, and it wasn't really fun to watch, and uh, so be it. So um, there's the fairings opening, and you can see the actual uh, two probes inside, one on top of the other. Um, the bottom probe has a lot more fuel, uh, because it actually will push most of the way to EVE, the, the top probe that'll land on Gilly. So here I actually just cut, like I said, to Eve. You can see Eve in the background. You see it sort of zoom up because I'm uh, warping in. Um, so one thing, normal, normally what you end up doing with Eve usually in the game is because it has a fairly thick atmosphere, a lot of players will approach Eve and to slow down, because it's always a, slowing down is always a, a difficult problem when you're going to come in to rendezvous with a body like this. Um, and just skim the atmosphere. Skim the atmosphere to slow down, and that should slow you down enough uh, to sort of get it captured in orbit around the planet rather than just having it fling you back off into space into a different direction. Well, um, I am running the deadly reentry mod, so I was worried that without a heat shield, right, actually skimming the atmosphere would melt, so melt some things. And that may have actually been true. Um, so I decided I had a whole bunch of fuel left, and I decided to do, just do a breaking burn instead. Um, it turns out that I actually didn't have as much fuel as I would have liked to have, and uh, it actually caused some problems later, which you'll see. But here I'm doing the breaking burn. And it's actually it's pretty significant, right? It's 1500 delta V if you want to actually do a full breaking burn. I also burned too early for this. That's also wasted some fuel, so we'll see that later. Um, but yeah. yeah, and all the fuel I'm using here, again, is in the bottom probe, the one that's going to land on EU. The top part of that, um, the whole probe there is actually a separate one, that which will separate after this burn, and uh, that will land on Gilly. Yeah, I had some problem. I, I don't know why it felt that the uh, while I was burning that the craft wanted to oscillate like around the actual uh, around the vector I wanted to burn towards. It kept going back and forth, and I was fighting it. I don't think I had to, but it felt like it was uh, off center. The center of mass and the center of thrust were not lining up for some reason. I don't know if that was actually true, but it felt like it. Uh, at some point I realized the fuel was getting low and this wasn't working out the way I wanted to so I just cut engines and I looked and it looks like I was skimming, still skimming the atmosphere much higher up than you would for normal aero braking but I was in orbit so I figured I'll just leave it and sort of deal with uh, deal with the consequences which turned out okay. So um, here I'm actually entering Eve's atmosphere. Eve's atmosphere goes up to I think 118 kilometers something like that and uh, so this is still skimming it but it's really high up if you wanted to really aero break you'd probably go down um, much further than this I don't actually know a good aero breaking height for EVE I've, I think I've done it once or twice but I, I never remember what it is um, it's probably something more along the lines of 50 kilometers or something like that Eve's atmosphere is pretty, pretty thick too, so that helps for aero braking. Uh, it's a fairly large planet as well. So after this, uh, sort of running through the atmosphere here, and like I said, it's lowering. You can sort of see it lowering the apoapse height a little bit, just not a lot, which is fine. Um, so what I end up doing is coming around the planet uh, into the lighter area and then setting up to actually separate the two probes. Because at this point, I'm in orbit around EVE. That's great. Um, and have more than enough fuel to actually make that orbit stable if I really wanted to. It turns out I didn't, but we'll see that later. Um, so here, I actually want to... Uh, there's a little bit of science done. And then I want to actually uh, split the two craft. And you'll see that. 
you can sort of see the blue striped circular bit between the two. That's the actual um, stack separator. Explosive bolts or whatever. Explosive separator. Uh, this was a one-way trip. Um, for any of you who've played before, that should be obvious, but the idea is that these probes would land and not return, which is fine. So there you go. There's the separation. Um, again, the one on the left is meant for Gilly, and the one, the other one was uh, is meant to, to actually land on Eve. Um, and there's a pretty significant difference in terms of design because they're pretty significant difference in terms of uh, the targets. Uh, Gilly has no atmosphere and it's very low gravity, um, and Eve has much higher gravity. The probe also was responsible for getting the whole apparatus to Eve in the first place, and then um, because Eve, have, Eve has an atmosphere, the probe can land uh, with a parachute rather than actually having to carry around enough fuel to actually do a power descent. So here I'm actually um, just setting up the rendezvous with Eve. I'm going to speed through most of this. Uh, or rendezvous with Gilly, I'm sorry. Setting up the Gilly probe to actually sort of go its separate way and encounter Gilly, and it turns out that, I, first of all, I entered around Eve trying to mirror the actual orbital inclination of Gilly uh, on purpose so that I didn't have to use too much fuel to do that here, and it turns out I was pretty close, 2.7 2 degrees off, I think, which is pretty good. And then, um, so here I'm just adjusting the uh, orbit to actually match inclination of the moon, and then I'll actually try, and it turns out on the pretty easily I was able to set up the encounter. Um, you know, Gilly's got a weird inclined and eccentric, eccentric orbit, which is can be hard to actually uh, burn to, to get to. But this wasn't too hard. It was in the right place. I was in the right place at the right time. Um, and it turned out to be just a simple, I don't have to wait for anything crazy. Um, and that's the uh, orbit set up there. And that's just a trim to make sure that when I come back around behind Eve, because I'll do one orbit of Eve and then it'll, I'll burn on the, the back side to actually uh, extend the orbit out to Gilly, which is was pretty good because um, using the Oberth effect there, where I'm going faster at the lower orbit, I should be able to save some delta V to actually make that encounter, which I did. This is going around the back side of Eve, and then uh, here's the burn. Yeah, and ended up being only 400 delta V, which is pretty good. Now, I also had to slow down when I got there, and it turned out to actually be, took more fuel to slow down and catch Eve um, as it was sort of speeding past, or speed up, I guess. It just depends on your frame of reference, but um, the actual encounter, once I hit Eve's gravity, I needed to... Um, sort of match e, uh, Gilly's speed. Sorry, not Eve, Gilly. As soon as I uh, hit Gilly's gravity, um, I ended up having to speed up more than it took me to actually get uh, to encounter in the first place. Okay, so now we're back at the... First of all, you can see this two probes orbits right there. Um, and as we go forward, they kind of separate. There we go. Yep. One's on the intercept course for Gilly, and then one's just coming around. So the Eve... Uh, probe, I had, had sort of a problem because I didn't have a lot of fuel left. I only had 244 delta V, it looks like, of fuel left. And I didn't really have any heat shields. Um, I was actually, as soon as I got to Eve, I was like, wait a minute, do I, I don't know if I need a heat shield even to get down in the atmosphere, assuming I'm going, you know, as slow as possible. Um, but I didn't, so I was like, well, I'll try it anyway. The uh, the trick was to slow down. I wanted to slow down before I tried to like really enter the atmosphere, to the you know sort of to the point of no return. Um, and so I I because we entered the sort of Eve sphere of influence and skimmed the atmosphere, uh, and I was in orbit. I just left that skimming process happen. So as I kept orbiting over and over again, uh, it slowed the craft down more and more. And I started. Um, the fastest that uh, at periaps I was at, I think, four kilometers per second, and I was able to slow that down to three before I actually sort of entered the atmosphere in such a way that I couldn't get back up, which is what's happening here. Um, again, cut a lot of that out because it's not, it was kind of boring. I just kind of went around in circles until the, the orbit decayed to the point where 
he wasn't going to come back out in space. So here, the one thing I was worried about, you know, I was still worried about that. I'd slowed down, but I was still worried about burning up. And I figured if, if there was going to be, you know, any kind of burning up or melting or, you know, thermal failures of any kind, I wanted it to be on the back of the craft first. Um, because the front of the craft, first of all, had all the science instruments, which were kind of the whole point. And then uh, it also had the parachute, which was pretty important because the parachute <laughs> would be, you know, the parachute doesn't, isn't there or doesn't open. It's, uh, this thing will just crash. So um, I was trying to figure out a way if maybe I could like turn it around um, somehow and, and, and come in the other way. The problem was is I was already in the atmosphere at this point, and so there's a whole bunch of air resistance, all right? Um, it's like, you know, I'm flying. It's like as if I was flying through Earth's atmosphere, although it's a bit thicker. And the problem was is the aerodynamics of this, the, the, there's more drag in back than there is in front because there's more stuff in back than there is in front, and there we're hitting reentry effects. Um, and because of that, the back wants to be further back and then the front. And that's why planes sort of look the way they do is because they're smaller in front, bigger in back, there's more drag in back, therefore they kind of keep facing one way, and that's on purpose. So I couldn't sort of overcome that. And I was looking at the uh, temperature here. It turns out it, I was going slow enough, and the atmosphere slowed me down quick enough that uh, I didn't heat up any of the parts more than, I think, 850 degrees which is not really a huge deal. Um, it's when you get to, I think, 1500 plus or something like that, that it starts to become a problem. Um, and this game, things don't get heated up as much as they do in the real world, which is interesting, um, because the Earth, the, the planets in this game are a lot smaller, and um, I think about sixth the size or something crazy like that. And, uh, you know, the Earth is much, like, they, they keep the gravity the same, but the, the size is different. And because the size is so small, you actually don't need to be going as fast to um, to orbit a lot of these, and that actually contributes to not having to worry so much about you know uh, reentry effects. Um, you know, just for comparison, when the Earth-like planet that you start from Kerbin, when you enter the atmosphere there, you're probably going about two to three kilometers per second. In the real world, when you hit the atmosphere coming in from orbit from the Earth, for example, you're probably going more like eight kilometers per second, something like along, along those lines. So it's a big difference. Um, and you know, obviously, higher speed causes more heat and friction, and you have to deal with that. So, uh, so here I'm. I'm at this point. I, I actually tried to to aim for that island. It didn't work. Um, I am going to end up landing in the ocean. I wasn't really whatever the, of, of whatever that purple ocean is. Uh, I I was I tr I wanted to I wanted to have more fuel so I could actually aim to land on a, an actual like uh, surface rather than liquid, so solid rather than liquid. But uh, it didn't turn out that way, which is fine. It turned out not to be a big deal anyway because the empty fuel tanks at the bottom made this whole thing turn into something very buoy like, which is really cool. Uh, so it, it all turned out fine. Uh, it just wasn't what I intended. So um, This took a really long time to actually float down because, again, the atmosphere is about 12 times as thick at sea level as in Kerbin. So um, stuff just, like, terminal velocity is lower. Stuff just falls slower, which is uh, definitely something that uh, can sort of take into account. And there's the parachutes opening. 700 meters, which it probably could have been a lot lower. Like now that I've sort of done Eve uh, a couple of times, there's some things that I would probably tweak. Um, putting wings on this probe would have been interesting. I probably could have glided a lot of places because, again, atmosphere is so thick, you don't need a lot of wing there. You could probably glide for a really long time. It would be interesting to design something that's meant to glide around Eve before it actually lands. Um, one thing that's not really represented in this game is the fact that, you know, if the, the atmosphere is this thick, it would actually be really, really hot where this probe is now to the point where it would probably, there's, there's not a lot of substances that would actually be able to stand, withstand this kind of heat. Whatever this liquid is, is probably liquid metal of some kind, like liquid uh, mercury or something. Um, not a pleasant thing to swim around in. So here's the landing. Like I said, it's landing at 2.8 meters per second. Normally, again, in Kerbin with a parachute that size, probably that mass. 
he'd be landing at like nine. So it's a pretty big difference, at least for a parachute. So like I said, the the it ended up sort of acting like a you know a buoy just kind of floating in the water. Everything was upright. It was perfect. Uh, usually when you know if you're not sort of really set up to to land in water, a lot of times things will flip over and it won't be as usable. But this worked out just great. Put the uh, Solar panels out, did some science, and everything was good. And that was landing on Eve. Um, and then we just uh, have to go to the Gilly, Gilly land on Gilly. So th first of all, this uh, it took a little trimming here, yeah, uh, to actually get the encounter perfect, which I did there. The um, I really liked the Gilly probe. It was very minimalistic, and I really like minimalistic designs for for this this particular game. Um, you get a close-up here. You can sort of see there's only... The probe itself, I think, is only 1.1 tons, and that's fully fueled. Um, and which is not at all very very heavy in comparison to a lot of the other things that you, that you can build. Um, most parts are, you know, half a ton or something like that. It just kind of depends. So, um... It was really light, and it was really the the actual engines are really RCS thrusters because they have more than enough thrust themselves to get a one ton craft around. I think um, the the minimum unit of thrust in the game is like one kilonewton, which uh, will push one uh, ton, a metric ton, which is a thousand uh, kilograms uh, around. Pretty, uh, it'll have a decent acceleration. Um, one kilonewton, I think, will counteract one ton in some. Uh, the acceleration will be, I don't know, something that's rounded off. I'm not sure. I'd have to actually figure that out. But so here, uh, you can see me burning um, the those RCS thrusters to actually slow down. the The problem that I had here is is the probe was actually moving pretty slow, and, and Gilly was actually moving pretty fast relative to Eve. Sorry, it was moving around Eve, and when I sort of, you know, uh, shot up this really elongated orbit, and when you have an elongated orbit, you um, move fast at the bottom, of the, the, the part of the orbit that's closest to the planet, but you move really slow at the top of the orbit, and right now I'm at the top of the orbit, and I, I just timed it in such a way that, that Gilly sort of flew past. So I had to actually burn to catch up with it, right? That was the thing, and I'd just done it there, but I almost missed it, right? It was a 500 meters per second difference, which wasn't a small amount. And so um, I had to make sure I could burn, I could, I could do a 500 meter change, you know, change in velocity of 500 meters per second quick enough, right? I had to do it within, you know, a couple of minutes there, otherwise Gilly would be gone, right? And I wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be close enough to have the gravity actually pull me into orbit around it. And... Uh, I was able to, but it was a little bit, uh, it wasn't exactly, it was a little little worrisome at first. So here I'm just um, adjusting the orbit to try and actually um, get close and slow down. Uh, this is me just going around, messing with some science. Um, I guess it's all monopropellant and all uh, three RCS thrusters, which means three kilonewtons of thrust. So because this, you know, at full, with full fuel, it would have a thrust to weight ratio, at least on, on Kerbin, of, a, of like 2.9 or something. On Gilly, Gilly is a really, um, is the smallest like celestial body actually in the game. And it is a really low amount of, of uh, gravity, almost non non-existent. You only need to be going 19 meters per second to actually orbit it. Um, I'd have to go look up the specifics about how small the gravity is in comparison. But I think it's, you know... It's like a tenth of the gravity or something like that of most things. It means that any adjustment I made in speed actually had a major impact about where things were going. This was a really cool looking sort of silhouette against the sunrise there. I uh, I took some, I actually turned off the UI and took some pictures, you know, which were, were pretty cool. Um, that happens in this game sometimes. You'll just get like a really nice thing while you're flying around somewhere. And this was one of them. So I think the plan was to sort of hop over that mountain that you actually see uh, as the horizon. And then over that, I'll be 
Uh, I want it to, of course, land in the daytime because um, it can be hard to see otherwise. And uh, over that mountain will be the landing site. There's me lowering the orbit, which will only, which just slows me down. Yeah, I think I'm going 18 meters per second, and I'm just n not quite in orbit. So I think 20 meters per second would put me in sort of a low orbit around Gilly, which is not much at all compared to the 2,000 you need for Kerbin, for example, or 3,000 for Eve. Uh, so one thing about the landing here is that it's fundamentally different than the one on EVE because on EVE, I mean, it wasn't a big deal. I just had to make sure I could survive re-entry in the atmosphere and then I had a parachute, right? It's no problem. Um, for uh, a body that has no atmosphere, however, it's a completely different story um, because you have to use thrusters to slow, your, slow yourself down rather than, you know, the atmosphere. Um, so... The easiest way to do this, so, so theoretically, if you had a perfectly spherical body, you would be, um, you would want to lower your orbit in such a way that it just skimmed the surface. If you could be in a perfectly circular orbit, you know, I don't know, an inch above the surface of the sphere that you were trying to land on, that will be the theoretical, you know, slowest possible that you could be going, right? Or half an inch or a quarter inch or whatever. Point is, is that, you know, you can get very, very close to the body in a perfectly circular orbit, and the lower you go, the slower you're going to act to actually be, just in general. Um, well, you'll be going faster, but you'll, your total energy will have been reduced. And the perfect scenario would be to do that and then to instantaneously bring your velocity to zero um, and, you know, sort of fall that last half inch or whatever, and then, hey, you'd be down. Um, However, you know, the reality, like if you look at Gilly, it was, it was a very big hunk of rock. It's not spherical at all. So you want to just lower your orbit as much as you can before you, you're going to crash into something. And then at some point, pick a landing spot and then kill all your horizontal velocity, which um, I did a couple of, of seconds before there. Um, you can see the vertical speed and horizontal speed uh, in the surface display section of the flight engineer on the right there. And you, if you watch those numbers... Um, as you watch those numbers, you, you, you can sort of see that happen. It, you'll, uh, uh, I actually landed here and then decided I didn't like this landing spot and actually lifted off and landed again. You can sort of see the killing of the horizontal velocity thing at some point. But um, basically, that's what you end up doing. Kill your horizontal velocity and then just deal with vertical uh, up and down. And there you just need to keep it to a manageable level so that you, um, you know, you're not going to crash. Right? difference between your crash and your hydraulics of your uh, landing legs working could be pretty minimal in some cases. Uh, in this case, though, it, it felt like the craft was hovering in midair, even though I was going, you know, two, three meters per second downward because, uh, again, the gravity is so low. And this is a fairly light craft, too. That was the other thing that changed. Or to take into account, I should say. Actually, don't have the, the current mass up here. The other thing, too, is I, I looked on the flight engineer, and it looks like the slope was actually pretty large that it was landing on. So um, that's not great, but the best way to deal with that is to actually point one of the landing legs down the slope so that if you land on the slope and you, you start tumbling over, you're really only going to tumble because of the triangle configuration towards the... There, I'm actually changing. Actually point down the slope. If you, you start tumbling, you're going to tumble... Um, towards the edges of the triangle that your landing feet make, but not towards the, the points of the triangle. So you try and actually say, okay, well, if I'm going to tumble downhill, so point the leg downhill so I don't actually, it might actually stop that. And here, it, it wasn't a huge deal, because um, I landed pretty slowly, right, half a meter per second, um, which, you know, most things are not going to tumble. Uh, it kind of depends, obviously, on where your center of mass is. So, um, but this, this worked out pretty well. Right, you can see this sort of like popping back up and settling. It's really slow because, again, Gilly being so low gravity. Um, so it landed here, and you can actually see it actually tip up another leg, which if I was going, I don't know, even meter per second faster than I was, 
um, that could have easily caused it to, to tip over. Right. I ended up on a 16.5 degree uh, slope, although I, I was going over slopes that were a lot higher, that were like 26. So, like I said, I did a little bit of the science here, but decided it was kind of wobbly. The craft was, and I didn't really like this spot, so I took back off. Yeah, at this point, I was like, nope, screw this. Let's get out of here. So um, here I went and I tried to find a different landing spot. Um, it was interesting because all these places look a lot more flat than where I was, but it wasn't obvious. Uh, if you have no flat surfaces, it's pretty hard to actually tell where you might have a flat surface um, because you have no sort of reference uh, frame of reference for what is like you know actually even. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Where I'm flying over here and looking at you know the again the slope meter like that. There's some that are okay, but um, you know I'm looking for something like two degrees, but it doesn't exist. Um, so this is me just kind of flying around trying to uh, guess where different areas are. And again, if you look at the horizontal and vertical speeds, um, when I actually get around to, you know, I'm accelerating and then decelerating, accelerating, decelerating, trying to find a good spot. Um, at some point, I couldn't really find what I was looking for and just said, screw it, let's, let's go with this. So uh, I think that's what I did about here. Now, what's interesting about this is I landed a lot faster. Um, I, I landed, I think... 1.5 meters per second or something like that and uh, it turned out to actually tumble the craft. I ended at, landed at half a meter per second the first time and only 1.5 this time but this actually caused it to tumble uh, because it again low gravity it, it mattered a lot more so um, again though because of the low gravity I could react to it it was higher gravity it would sort of fall and, and immediately I, I wouldn't be able to sort of correct it first so here I just kind of boosted back up, change orientation, boosted back down. At a lower speed, 0.3, so I had no problems. Um, this was a bit more stable, so I was good with it. And did the rest of the science. Uh, all right, I think that is it for this. Um, I, like I said, this was a uh, trip from from Kerbin to E, landing on Even Gilly with unmanned probes. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if so, I will look into doing more in the future. All right, thanks. <laughs>